Yesterday's prophecies, today's headlines. This is the Hal Lindsey Report. And now, Hal Lindsey. Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Hal Lindsey Report. A new school year has begun. I'm sure that kids today feel much the same excitement and dread previous generations felt as they face the new academic year. Young people have a lot on their minds, but I doubt if any of them are worried about poison in the schoolhouse. Nevertheless, that's the great danger in our schools, poison. Not from some unknown pollutant lurking in the walls, lead in the paint, or asbestos in the ceiling. It's a mental and spiritual poison skulking in the school's books, films, and curricula. This kind of poison kills more thoroughly than cyanide, but thankfully, there is an antidote. Last year on this program, I took you on a tour of education in America, focusing mostly on high school. Tonight, let's graduate and head for university. Even if you have a pretty good idea of what's coming, you better buckle up for this one. It ain't pretty. You've heard me discuss my years on America's campuses. You've heard me warn about the alarming rise of Marxism and communism on those campuses. I've told you about the unbelievable tide of atheism, agnosticism, and secularism that is crashing through the faculties and student bodies of America's colleges. Suffice it to say that when your child goes away to a public or private secular university, you will probably not recognize him or her when they return home. That's how devastatingly effective university faculties have become at corrupting and co-opting our children. But now those educators have embarked on a new tactic. No longer are they seeking to influence your children away from America's founding values of personal responsibility, free enterprise, and democracy. They're actively trying to destroy their basic moral and spiritual values. Here are just a few of the hundreds, if not thousands, of examples occurring on campuses across the United States. The University of South Carolina Upstate scheduled an LGBTQ seminar. What's that, you say? LGBTQ stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning. The seminar was scheduled to include a session called How to Be a Lesbian in 10 Days or Less, presented by someone who calls herself an expert lesbian. It was to be paid for in part by university funds. When campus reform ran a story on it, several state senators became incensed over the idea that taxpayer-funded institution should pay for such a thing, and they were able to stop it. One of those state senators was Lee Bright. He said, our state system of higher education has been hijacked into spreading a liberal social and political agenda, which is morally repugnant to the overwhelming majority of South Carolinians. While I agree with Senator Bright's comments, I don't think they go far enough. It isn't just higher education that has been hijacked, it's all of public education and to a large extent, all formal education. As I go through the rest of this short list to give you an idea about what's happening in America's universities, remember that they set the agenda for our public schools. They create curricula for preschoolers as much as they do for college freshmen. Politicians and media turn to academics for answers on everything from global warming to how you should raise your child. So if we see poison bubbling up in the universities, be assured that it spreads from there to all society, including pulpits, newscasts, entertainment, and government with stunning speed and efficiency. In May, an event at the University of California at Los Angeles, or UCLA, encouraged students to perform a certain sexual activity instead of studying for finals. They held a workshop entitled, Finals Can Wait, 
masturbate. Sponsored by a group that calls itself the LGBTQQIAA and Progressive Sorority. Unbelievable, but true. That stands for, I get this, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, ally, and asexual. At this rate, it can't be long before bestiality and pedophilia will be among those represented in these bizarre coalitions. But they're not only allowed on today's campuses, they're encouraged by school administrations. Today, it's common for universities across the nation to sponsor campus-wide observance called Sex Week. Such events usually feature seminars on various forms of sadomasochism and other things, the titles of which would have been enough to make a sailor blush just a few years ago. Now, I'm a former sailor, so I can testify to that. It's uh, outrageous. The University of Tennessee uses student fees to pay for the week of debauchery. The state legislature had to intervene to allow students who don't want to support such activities to opt out of having their student fees used for the event. Tiffany Leeper, founder of Girls Against Porn and Human Trafficking, said, the university is potentially violating Tennessee law by not reviewing the content of Sex Week in depth and materials brought by those invited. The university is also violating the Department of Education's civil rights letter of finding requiring policies that prohibit sexual harassment related activities that create a hostile and sexually charged environment for females on campus. Is it surprising with all the emphasis on sex as if it were the one and only true pleasure in life that there is today an epidemic of rape on campus? At Oklahoma State, students are now required to take a sexual assault course. How bad have things become when a major university concludes that young people come to its campus, have gone from birth all the way to college and still need to be told that rape is simply wrong. Of course, why should we expect anything less from a culture that sees right and wrong as merely relative concepts subject to change depending on circumstances and environment? At Chico State University in California, the local chapter of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship has been found guilty of discrimination for requiring the group's leader to be a Christian. Imagine the audacity of a Christian club that wants to be led by Christians. <laughs> As a result, InterVarsity, which has been active on American campuses since 1938, has now been derecognized by all 23 schools in the California State University system. At graduations across country last spring, universities gave special graduation cards to gay and lesbian graduates. Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts, hitherto an all-women's college, has officially adopted a policy that will allow them to admit anyone who simply identifies as a woman. I wonder what happens if a guy's feelings about his femininity change at mid-semester. Can he at least finish out the term? Following a major cheating scandal in 2012, a new study of Harvard students shows that 17% admit to cheating in academics. Since cheating and lying are first cousin offenses, we can assume that a lot of cheaters also lied and that the number of cheaters is higher than 17%. The influence of Harvard graduates is wildly disproportionate to their numbers. Probably more than any other university, their alumni run the country. That makes this a frightening statistic indeed. I believe that one of the worst things you can do with your money is give it to a secular university. Wonderful Christian people often put these institutions in their wills, sometimes giving millions to universities already reeking of money. And despite the beautiful buildings and overpaid football coaches, the main thing these donors are helping 
the institution to do is corrupt the young. How much wealth do state universities have? Enough that they can heedlessly throw cash to the wind. In 2012, Bill Clinton spoke at UCLA. They gave him $250,000 for one speech. If an organization can afford to pay someone a quarter of a million dollars an hour, do they need your money? Then this year, UCLA invited Hillary Clinton to speak. Her fee, 300,000. And the next two years, you can expect to hear Hillary and Bill all over television and live appearances across the country and not pay a dime. I suspect you'll hear them and see them until you are sick of them. But UCLA paid over half a million dollars for the privilege of their presence for two hours. The conclusion is obvious. UCLA must have money to burn. David Campbell, a professor at Grinnell College, is full of praise for the way the Chinese government is handling the country's pollution problem. He said, authoritarian governments can make rapid decisions. Sometimes they're benign. More often than not, they're malignant. But by and large, I think the Chinese government in the last few decades has been very enlightened. Why American academics love communist countries is beyond me. Despite its force one child per couple policy, China puts out more pollution than any nation on the planet, bar none. It's hardly a role model for the environmentalists. Professor Hillary Mann Leverett of American University appeared on MSNBC not long ago and made the startling claim that anti-Semitism doesn't exist in the Middle East. Either the professor is misinformed or disingenuous, neither of which are complimentary for someone considered an expert in foreign policy in the Middle East. As far as I know, she still has the job, she's still teaching kids, and her position continues to imply that she is an intellectual role model. Still talking about anti-Semitism, Ms. Leverett went on to say, there's no history of that in the Middle East. There's not this deep-seated Arab Jewish or, you know, Muslim Jewish animosity. And on we go through the looking glass, down the rabbit hole, and into the dark mind of modern academia, where good is evil and evil is good, and where people who did not like to retain God in their knowledge have been given over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. I'll have more on the treacherous influence of America's universities in future programs. For now, we need to uphold in prayer our children who are attending those colleges and earnestly pray for those who are called to minister to America's students. There's a mighty spiritual war being fought on those campuses and it will determine not only our nation's future, but the eternal destinies of millions of our children. Become prayerfully aware of what our schools and universities are teaching our children. For Christian parents, it will probably be a terrifying awakening. Take action now before it's illegal to protest. Your children's and grandchildren's futures are at stake.